Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students welcome to today's lecture in today's class we will discuss about a particular uh, property of the system that we have ignored so far for example in all our previous discussion we have defined the state of the system as a function of coordinates but what we have ignored is its time dependence but from our classical experience from the experience that we have from this classical world we see that the system actually evolves or changes with the time how do we incorporate that aspect into our quantum mechanical systems that is the topic of our uh, discussion today so in this context we will be discussing the time dependent schrodinger equation and uh, its consequence uh, on on uh, different systems first we uh, would start from the fact that if you remember we said that for a quantum mechanical system the state function contains all the information about the system that we can possibly want to know this state function depends of course on the special coordinates x but it also has got its temporal dep dependence that means this function the wave function of the system is a dip, is, is a function of time as well we also discussed while discussing the postulates that while the wave function itself does not have a meaning what has a meaning is the square of the wave function or the psi star psi which has a probabilistic meaning now if you compare this system with classical mechanical system for example using newton's equation of motion we can always tell that if, if we know the initial position and velocity of, of a particle using classical mechanics and Newton's equation of equations of motion in particular, we can describe the position and momentum of this particle in any future time. So, the time dependence of the system is easily obtained through classical mechanical treatment. But in quantum mechanics, how do we say that how does this wave function evolve in time or how does this probability density evolve in time? What is the time evolution of different properties of the system? This is what we are going to discuss in today's class. Now, before doing that, let us see what are the sources of time dependence in our system. Uh, there could be two uh, possible cases. One, where the operator itself operator itself is time dependent. That means, when we write down the quantum mechanical operator time appears explicitly. That means, if, we, if I consider it uh, give, if I try to give you an example for example, if I uh, apply a potential energy uh, where the potential energy would actually keep changing as time, time progresses. So, in that case the potential energy has an explicit dependence on time when the operator itself is time dependent in that case of course, the we, we have to worry about how the system evolves in time. But what we have seen so far we have solved quite a few systems if you recall none of the quantum mechanical systems that we uh, experienced or we treated had explicit time dependence in their operator. It is to a great extent true that many of the operators that we will be dealing with in, in, in quantum mechanics and its application in chemistry we would not see uh, many examples of operators where operator is has explicit time dependence. But of course, this is a straightforward case if the operator is time dependent. So, we must be we must be concerned about the time dependence of the wave function, but even when the operator is not exclusively time dependent, then also we may have to worry about the time dependence of the system. For example, we know that Hamiltonian operator has, has a kinetic energy contribution, has a potential energy contribution. Let us consider a molecule and write down its Hamiltonian. So, suppose we have the Hamiltonian of the uh, molecule and for this Hamiltonian, suppose we say that we solve the Schrodinger equation and we obtain this 
uh, the, the value of psi, the eigenfunction, and the value of E, the eigenvalues. The energy and the wave function is known above for that system. This is the initially prepared uh, molecule. Let us call this molecule as M. Now, suppose suddenly I interacted this molecule with external field. Let us say I uh, irradiate this molecule with red, uh, light or in a, uh, I ionize this, uh, photo ionize this molecule. So, when I do that, so suppose I am photo ionizing this molecule, what I have is that a cation plus a free electron. So, the free electron goes out and what I have is a cationic system. Now, this cationic system has one electron less compared to the molecular system. So, therefore, its Hamiltonian has changed. So, suppose I call this Hamiltonian as H prime, which is a different Hamiltonian starting from this uh, original Hamiltonian. Now, when I have changed the, I have done this I have photo ionization, the electron is gone. Now, the molecule is suddenly finding itself as, as, a, as a cationic species. Now, what happens to the wave function? So, the initial wave function that we had was an eigen function of this Hamiltonian, the original molecular Hamiltonian, but this function is no longer an ham eigen function of this changed Hamiltonian, because this changed Hamiltonian corresponds to a cationic system. So, the wave function or the state of the system will slowly change to another value psi prime, which may be an eigen function of this m plus or the cationic species, but the we did this photo ionization suddenly, but the system or the molecule would evolve in time to come from psi to psi prime. So, here even when my Hamiltonian itself does not have an explicit time dependence, still the wave function changes with the time. So, there can be a time dependence of the wave function even when I am considering a Hamiltonian or an operator to be uh, more general, when I am considering an operator or a Hamiltonian which does not have explicit dependence of time. Our discussion is mostly on syst systems like this, where operators do not have explicit time dependence and we would see how the properties of the system would change in time. To do this, we would actually introduce uh, uh, a new equation. This equation when you see, uh, you know that this is Schrodinger equation, but this is a time independent version of Schrodinger equation. We have a time dependent version of Schrodinger equation, time dependent Schrodinger equation, which is given as h psi equals i h bar where this is the left hand side is the operation of Hamiltonian and the wave function and the right hand side you see is i h bar d psi by d t. So, this equation the time dependent Schrodinger equation is a first order differential equation with respect to time. So, this we would treat as a postulate of our quantum mechanics that when, when we have system where the Hamiltonian does not have explicit time dependence, the, this time dependent Schrodinger equation is followed. So, this is our uh, time dependent Schrodinger equation that we have. Now, the point is this psi as you can see, this psi will have explicit position and time dependence. I, s I would like to write this in as a, again a, a variable uh, separation of variable that let this total wave function be a product of psi x, the function which has only space dependence and another function let us call that f which has explicit time dependence. So, now this kind of wave functions the eigen functions where which depended only on space we have seen in plenty of examples for example, particle in a box, particle in a sphere, hydrogen atom, harmonic oscillators all in all these cases we saw the Hamiltonian had did not have any explicit time dependence and the wave functions that we did not obtain also did not have any time dependence. So, this part of the wave function we already know and now something new is appearing over here which is the time function. Now, let us apply this uh, 
new definition of the function in time dependent Schrodinger equation. So, when I do this I have equals i h bar I have a time uh, uh, derivative of the wave function and I see I have a function which has one part has exclusive space dependence another has exclusive time dependence. So, the part that has exclusive space dependence would be would be independent. So, therefore, so in this case this uh, time derivative could, could also be written as partial derivative especially because we have uh, the space dependence also. Uh, now, look at the uh, left hand side the Hamiltonian does not have the Hamiltonian has kinetic energy term potential energy term. So, uh, we, we are aware of this, but it does not have any explicit time dependence. So, therefore, no matter what functional form has this Hamiltonian it would only be uh, having some effect on psi of x in, in particular if the Hamiltonian has a differential operator it will be differentiation with respect to x. So, therefore, the f function can it will be uh, we can bring it out of the purview of Hamiltonian. So, we write this now let us divide both left hand side and right right hand side by this psi x of t that means psi x multiplied by f of t so when i do this in the left hand side i have this term and in the right hand side I have where I have from this step to this step I came by dividing psi x f of t in both left hand side and right hand side. Now, you see I have some terms in the left hand side of the equation some in the right hand side equation. The terms in the left hand side have dependence only on space or x dependence and in the right hand side I see functions which have only dependence on t. So, left hand side has x dependence, right hand side have t dependence and both are equal. <coughs> in such a case we can say that both left hand side and right hand side are equal to each other, but they are also both constants because both the sides depend on two independent variables and they are equal. So, this can happen only when both left hand side and right hand side are equal to constant and let us give this constant a name E. You would soon uh, un realize why I gave this constant name E because when you look at this left hand side you see when I rearrange this equation I get H psi divided by psi of x is equal to E. So, therefore, when I rearrange this I get this is this equation is something very familiar to us. This is simply the time independent Schrodinger equation. So, what we see is that we started from time dependent Schrodinger equation. We used this variable separation saying that the let the total wave function have a special component and a temporal component. In that when we do this we have arrive at the time independent Schrodinger equation. So, therefore, the time dependent Schrodinger, Schrodinger equation is more uh, general we can derive the time independent Schrodinger equation from this time dependent Schrodinger equation. So, this part we know and we also know about this E what are they? They are the eigenvalues of where the psi are the eigenfunctions of this Hamiltonian. So, for example, since Hamiltonian is, is a Hamiltonian operator I would always know that I can write such a equation where n depend n represents one of the many eigenfunctions of this Hermitian operator because Hermitian operator will have a complete set of orthonormal eigenfunctions. So, this i n is one such eigenfunction corresponding to the energy E n. So, I can write many such equations psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 for each of them I can write this Schrodinger equation. Now, let us look at the right hand side of this term which is something new that we would obtain. When you look at the right hand side you see I have this kind of term I will take this i h bar to the uh, 
uh, right hand side now i integrate both uh, left hand side and right hand side but before that let us look at this what is e e is we can express e as h bar omega you have seen that h bar is, is an universal constant and we express this in terms of this angular frequency uh, as e, e is h bar divided by omega so therefore e by h bar is simply uh, minus i omega dt now, I integrate both left hand side and right hand side when I do that you would see that left hand side is, will give me a, a natural logarithmic function and the right hand side will give me minus i omega t plus a, a constant of integration and therefore, f of t would be something some constant multiplied by e minus i omega t. So, now we see that this f the time dependent part of the function has a simple form as some constant multiplied by e to the power minus i omega t. So, how is this omega defined? Omega is defined in terms of e. What is this e? I look at this left hand side of the equation and then I see that this e is one of these eigenvalues of this time independent Hamiltonian. So, therefore, I can write this for example, for, for a given value of e n, I can write this function as e. So, in other words my psi the total wave function I can write as when I am writing this the wave function as both time and space dependent I would write the capital psi which is given as uh, 2 bars over here and only when I have special dependence the wave function would be written as small case psi. So, I have now psi x multiplied by e to the power minus i omega n t. So, this is what I get as a general form of this time dependent uh, I, uh, wave function when one important thing when the Hamiltonian does not have explicit dependence on time. So, I have this second term is called a time factor. Now, we would see uh, something interesting uh, from this. So, we we found that our psi of x t is given as psi n x uh, e to the power minus i omega n t. So, I can write this as psi n. So, this is one of those uh, for time dependent functions. Now, let us look at what is the probability density for this time dependent state. So, the probability density for this time dependent state would turn out to be if I take the absolute square you would see the psi n. So, I will get psi n start psi n. So, which will be absolute value of this and then multiplied by this function multiply multiplied with its complex conjugate. So, when I look at this function this is an exponential function. So, the its complex conjugate will be simply e to the power plus i omega and t and when I multiply them this becomes 1. So, therefore, what I see is that although this function the total time dependent function has a time factor in it, but what it I am seeing what I am observing is that the probability density is independent of time. So, the probability density does not have time dependence so the probability density remains the same no matter how the time changes. When such a case happens, such a situation arises, we call this function as a stationary state. Please note stationary normally means which is not moving, which is at rest, but here the system is not necessarily at rest. What it means is its probability density does not change. For example, if you take particle in a box problem, you you saw that if uh, I am looking at the second or third uh, wave function, I ob observe a point where I have a node or I observe a point where I have uh, the maximum probability. So, what this analysis tells that the place where I am observing a node will remain so 
no matter how long I wait. The place where, uh, where I observe maximum probability will still be the place of maximum probability even as time passes by. So, therefore, that state the Eigen function of a time independent Hamiltonian is a stationary state because there the probability density does not change with time. We can also say that for example, the expectation value of this Hamiltonian operator if I have to consider. So, I would simply uh, do that as where I am integrating over all, all space all time. In that case also this expectation value or the average value will be independent of time because you see this i n star and psi n will have uh, the time dependent that time factor would simply uh, become 1 and therefore, the expectation value will also become independent of time. So, both average value as well as the probability density would not change and in that case we call this system as a stationary state. Now, we will look at another case where there is the state would become non stationary. Let us come to that. Suppose, in the previous example we said that this psi n which is the state of the system happens to be an Eigen function of this time independent Hamiltonian. But suppose I say uh, the psi of the state of the system is actually not an Eigen function of of the time independent Hamiltonian. So, that means, the state function is not an Eigen function rather it is an any other arbitrary function. When this is the case what I can do is that I can express because this i n's are the Eigen function of a Hermitian operator which form a complete set of orthonormal of uh, Eigen function set. So, therefore, I can express any arbitrary function which is not an Eigen function, any arbitrary function as a linear combination of the Eigen functions of the time independent Hamiltonian. So, I write this as C n psi n x and for each each case I use this time time factor as this. So, I am expressing this total state of the function which is now not an Eigen function of the Hamiltonian. So, therefore, I am expressing it as a linear combination of several Eigen functions. So, we to, to make it uh, um, uh, simple, we will consider the case where the linear combination has only two terms. So, C 1 and C 2 and in this that case, if I have to obtain this psi star psi, you would see that I will get I am instead of doing this, I am uh, writing this down. So, I would get these two terms which will not have it. So, you can just express this as the two term C 1 psi 1 uh, e to the power minus of i omega t and plus C 2 psi 2 e to the power minus i omega 2 t and then you when you obtain this you would get this. So, I would get the uh, another term C 1 star psi 1 C 2 psi 1 star psi 2 e to the power i omega 1 minus omega 2 multiply it by t plus another term which will be c 1 c 2 star psi 1 x psi 2 star e to the power i omega 2 minus omega 1 multiplied by t. So, now when I look at the time the probability density of this function which is not an Eigen function of the Hamiltonian. In that case, I see that it will have some time independent terms plus I have these terms which have explicit time dependence. So, now I see the probability density is dependent on the time. So, this, this time factor still survives. So, that means it will say that the probability density will keep changing with time and when is that happening? that is happening when my 
state function is not an Eigen function of the uh, original Hamiltonian rather it is, it is a I am expressing it as a linear combination of several uh, Eigen functions. So, it is an arbitrary func function which is not an Eigen function. In this case where the probability density has explicit time dependence I call them as non stationary states. So, these are non stationary states. So, that means their uh, probability density would keep changing with, with time. So, we discussed about the stationary state and the uh, non stationary state. What is now interesting is that to look at that we have this C n terms, but we still do not know what this C n because the moment if we find out what is C n then we can easily find out what is the time evolution of this probability density. Because all other quantities are known to me, psi 1, psi 2 are known because I assume that I have solved the time independent Schrodinger equation. Omega 1, omega 2 are also known because they are closely rela they are related to E 1 and E 2 and its solutions are known. So, what is not known is the C 1 and C 2. So, we will now look at how we can get obtain this C 1 and C 2. So, to obtain my C n, suppose I want to uh, get, uh, I, I want to obtain my C, C n. What I would do is that I will do a little exercise. We saw that stationary states probability density did not change with time, but then there are non stationary states where the probability density has explicit dependence on time, but to be able to do that we need to know this coefficient c 1 and c 2 c uh, and so on, uh, which are actually the uh, coefficients that we used for the to express the uh, state of the system as a linear combination of the Eigen function of the time independent Hamiltonian. How we get this c, uh, these uh, coefficients and what are their consequences at the are what we will discuss in our next class. Thank you for your attention.